real quick i just got done editing this video and i realized that my bluntness and sarcasm dark humor can sometimes come off disrespectful i did not intend for that to be the vibe and i just wanted to apologize for that real quick genuinely that was not my intention and i also want to acknowledge because this video is very centered around the event the the near the end when he fell into this dark hole and was no longer in the right state of mind to making clear decisions there's not a lot on who he was before and i don't feel that he was like a bad dude through and through it's not like he was a serial killer or something like that he just i feel had a, an extreme lapse of judgment while spiraling down the rabbit hole so my condolences to any of his family members and loved ones that might come across this video my intentions were not to be disrespectful trigger warning there is potentially damaging subjects in this video such as will assault, murder, self-harm, or harm of a child. If this is not something for you, that's okay. We'll see you in another video. Do you want to see something funny? I'm going to show you who I am. Hello guys, welcome to Murder Mystery Mondays. This is not a murder or a mystery. I mean, okay, it's a little bit of murder. Y you'll see later on here. Today we're gonna be talking about the Bjork stalker, Ricardo Lopez. Uh, some of you might have heard of this, some of you might not have. It is one of the m more interesting stalker cases I've came across. Ricardo was from Uruguay. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Ricardo was born in Uruguay, U Ur Uruguay, in 1975, and they moved to the United States in Georgia. And Ricardo had a good relationship with his family. He was described as easygoing, but introverted. Lopez didn't really have that many friends. And the, the few friends he did have were males and never befriended females. He apparently tended to be a little awkward with the ladies to the point where he never had a girlfriend. And a big part of that was he didn't have the best self-esteem. He felt inadequate and it would make him really awkward. But Lopez had dreams of becoming a famous artist so he dropped out of school. But unfortunately, he did not seriously pursue the career of becoming an artist because of feeling inferior and the fear of being rejected into art school. So in order to support himself, he joined his brother's pest control company. He was an exterminator. Unfortunately, by the age of 17, Lopez became very reclusive and fell into these fantasies he had going on in his head and was fascinated with celebrities. In 1993, Lopez became infatuated with the singer Bjork. He began getting information about her life, following her career, and wrote many, many fan letters to Bjork. At first, Lopez called her his muse and originally said that his infatuation gave him a euphoric feeling. As time went on, Lopez's obsession became consuming and he fell further from reality. In Lopez's diary, he wrote of longing to be accepted by Bjork and to be a person who had an effect on her life. He fantasized about inventing a time machine that would enable him to time travel to the 1970s to become friends with her as a child. His fantasies about Bjork were not sexual. In his diary he wrote, I couldn't have sex with Bjork because I love her. Lopez's diary grew to 803 pages half of which were about Bjork, 
some of it about self-harm and I think like 50 something pages about other celebrities but literally like 400 pages of it was about Bjork and a lot of the diary was talking about him feeling insecure about being overweight uh, that's a pattern throughout this. He's very fixated on his weight and feeling inadequate. He also mentioned about not loving the fact that he's never had a girlfriend. He referred to himself in his diary, a loser who could never learn to drive. <laughs> Complained about his job as an exterminator that earned him little money. The diary contained 168 references to Lopez's feeling of failure, 34 references to suicide, and 14 references to murder. In 96, Lopez was living alone in his apartment in Florida. And around that time, Lopez had read an article about Bjork and Goldie's relationship. I think we all know he did not like this. He he got really angry and took this as a betrayal from a woman he has never met and also seemed to really have a problem with the fact that she was dating a black man. Yeah, this is one of those stories. In his diary, he had wrote, I wasted eight months and she has a fucking lover. He started to write about how he wanted to punish Bjork for this betrayal. Eventually he stopped writing in his diary and started filming instead as a way of documenting. His quote was, Hello, my name is Ricardo Lopez. It is January 14th, 1996. Today's my birthday. I'm 21. Now, yesterday I purchased this camera. Today I purchased the tripod. And I will begin a documentation of my life of my art and of my plans comfort is what i seek in speaking to you i am being my own psychologist you are a camera i am ricardo he recorded 11 tapes that were all roughly two hours long and the videos were of him planning his revenge on bjork Lopez's anger over Bjork dating Goldie started becoming very, very intense. And he decided he was going to kill her. In one entry, he states, I'm just going to have to kill her. I'm going to send a package. I'm going to be sending her to hell. So at first, his plan was to make a bomb filled with hydrodermic needles containing HIV. What? This is how he wanted to impact her life by some sort of disfigurement or something that would literally impact her life. Eventually he realized that was extremely complicated to achieve. So instead, he constructed a letter bomb that contained sulfuric acid. He really wanted to have an impact on her life. His plan was to ship this out to London through her record label. And either it was going to kill her or disfigure her. And Ricardo planned to kill himself. So it's quoted here that the reason he decided to commit suicide after mailing the bomb is so that they could be reunited in heaven. It's very clear throughout this that that was not at all 
what he wanted. He seems to have strictly wanted to mess her life up. Even though he contradicts himself, he's also very transparent and it's clear that his intentions are to punish her for betraying him. And he simply wants to disfigure her or make some sort of impact on her life. And it seems he doesn't care that it's a negative impact. In fact, it seems like maybe he prefers that. Also, I believe at some point he makes references about like that he's going to go to hell or whatever. So if his intention was they're going to meet in heaven and he thinks she's going to heaven and he thinks he's going to hell. Yeah, I get what I'm saying. In September 12, 1996, Ricardo filmed his last tape titled Last Day and stated he was very nervous, but that if he aroused suspicion, he would kill himself rather than be arrested. And after returning to the post office, Lopez resumed filming. As Bjork music plays in the background, Lopez was naked shaved his head and was painting his face. As he's doing this, he's looking into the camera saying how he's a little nervous, but he's not drunk, not high, X, Y, and Z. He also states that he's not depressed, but... As Bjork's song, I Remember You, finishes playing, this part is gonna get a little graphic, guys. As the song finishes playing, Lopez shouts, this is for you, puts the revolver in his mouth. The film keeps going and eventually hits its stop point. There is a sign behind him that said, this is the best of me and the date. Later on, it's theorized that he, his intention with that was for it to catch his brain matter. So that was... September 12th that he passed away and September 16th there was reports of foul odor and blood coming from his apartment. The police department comes and discovers his body and written on the wall was a message saying uh, something along the lines of this tape is terrorism, it's for the FBI and this was from Ricardo. So the sheriff evacuated the building, got the bomb squad, went out to try and find where this bomb was at. It had not got sent out yet. So luckily, bomb squad was able to intercept the package before it reached London to Bjork. Apparently there was not too horrible of a concern of the bomb reaching her directly because her mail was heavily vetted. But most likely, whoever is vetting her mail was definitely in danger. Also, obviously Ricardo didn't know this, but Bjork and Goldie had broke up a few days before Ricardo had sent the bomb and unalived himself. So after Lopez's incident, Bjork made statements, and I quote, It's terrible, very terrible. It's a very sad thing that someone would shoot his face off. And she also states, I make music, but in other terms, you know, people shouldn't take me too literal and get involved in my personal life. She sent a card of flowers to Lopez's family. Bjork left London to Spain, where she recorded her album, Homogenic. She also hired security for her and her son. A year after his death, Bjork had an interview and made a statement. I just find it very sad that people get in that kind of state. Bjork, I'm very upset, obviously. Are you very frightened? Yeah, I'm, I'm still doing the same work. I was more worried about my son, really, but um, he seemed to de deal with it in a very brave manner. So he dealt with it in a very brave manner? He did, yes. How have you been? 
Well, I'm, you know, I'm just, it's just kind of a very sad thing, you know, obviously when somebody shoots their face off, you know, it's terrible. I'm not sure if I'll treat Marie properly for a while. Must be very sad. Must be very sad. Well, I'm more worried about my son, you know. I'll be fine. I'm always fine. Lopez's family and friends were very aware of Lopez's obsession, but had stated that he was harmless, that he wasn't a threat, and wasn't even capable of being violent. At one point, his brother told him, get a real woman, you're obsessed. A psychiatrist who had treated Lopez for his anxiety shortly before he died even stated that he wasn't capable and seemed to be completely harmless. Lopez's tapes were confiscated by the FBI and released to journalists. So the gag of it all is he did reach his goal. Thankfully, Bjork wasn't physically harmed or her son or anybody else in this process, but his goal was to make an impact for her to think about him and he was successful in that sense. She was traumatized by this. It deeply affected her. She even wrote a song in like kind of his perspective. I listened to it. It's called So Broken. <laughs> I've noticed Bjork is a very interesting person. And her music is also very unique and artsy. Also some think that in the Hunter music video, that she's making references to his final tape. And that is the story of Ricardo Lopez, the Bjork stalker. It really makes you wonder what's going on inside the minds of people. This is also why I'm, my motto is trust no bitch, but she didn't even know this dude existed. Oh, and I hope you guys caught why I put this down as a Murder Monday, since he had the intention of murder. Thankfully, he was not successful, but that's why it's on as a Murder Monday. So let me know what you guys think of this case down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if there's a case you'd like to see on this channel, put it in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. It's a very interesting song. I've noticed Bjork is... Get a real event. Eventually. At some point on September 12, 1969, a loser who. I'm cold, don't you judge me. Unfortunately, he didn't seriously pursue his career in 